during this period of five years, uh, actually it was about four years at that point of, of writing, I had been building myself up in the social in social media. I had been very active on Twitter. Um, uh, Facebook had started to take on, and I was doing I was blogging. Um, but I had also built a lot of friendships with uh, with industry people um, on through Twitter, and one of them was this very sweet, very nice agent uh, in New York. Um, and we were both uh, snobs when it came to coffee and Nutella. So she messaged me on Twitter and she said, hey, I'm going to do something cool next week. Um, and she said that she's going to make um, Nutella chocolate chip cookies. And she's going to go to all of, her, all of the agencies that she knows around her. And she's going to give them cookie and ask them to do a video of what they call a manus manuscript wish list. M uh, hashtag M MSWL, uh, WL. So she said, so it's going to be a lot of feedback from a variety of agents and editors. You may want to keep your eye on that. Perfect. So as I'm watching this, I suddenly see a tweet from Stacy Donahue. Okay, so guys, please um, understand that Twitter is a perfect way to stalk without them even knowing that you're stalking them. You don't actually have to follow them. Put them on a list and look at the list. They don't even have to know that you know you're a Justin Bieber fan. But you know you can do this and you can follow their activities and see what they're talking about without being creepy. Um, so she tweets that, uh, and she says in her tweet oh, that she's looking for a contemporary romance, that's blah, 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 and it was just like the kind of book that I had written. Um, but I know that on her webpage she says, not open to submissions until October 1st. So another person tweets and says, uh, but Stacey, you, on your website says you're not open to submissions. And she says, if in your header you write that I, you saw my tweet, I will read it. So I'm getting ready to jump on it, and I go back to her submission page because you have to follow the process. Everything that they say, follow it. There is a reason. Sometimes it's because automated, they have automated processes that, that break things apart. So I go there, and it says contemporary romance, and I had not looked at the next bullet. Heat level, uh, the hotter, the better, something to that effect. And my story is not bad. My, my story does not rival Fifty Shades of Pink or whatever. Um, <laughs> It wasn't that kind of a story. And so I wrote Jean. I said, you know, thanks, Jean, for the, for the heads up, but I don't think it's going to work. And she said, Ara, your definition of heat may be different than, your, uh, than her definition of heat. Just send it. You've got nothing to lose. All right, well, what's one more rejection? So I send it out. Um, and within two days, she replies back. And she said, I love it. Uh, please send me the rest of the manuscript. I'm like, OK. So I send it, um, and, and I wait. At this point, about two weeks into it, another agent contacts me and she says, I want to offer you representation. So that in and of itself should have been awesome. But the reality was that the way I was looking at agents it was very strategic. I was looking at my, the, my favorite agents, the ones that I would love to represent me, those that I would be happy, and those that were OK. You know, so she was one in the middle. Um, and the way I looked at it was beyond um, uh, you know, their social media presence. I was looking at Publishers Marketplace to see who was ranked what in different categories. And Stacey Donahue, who I really hoped would, uh, would pick me up, uh, at the time she was number three in New Adult, uh, so, which meant she knew how to sell it. In any event, so um, this person contacts me and she says, I would love to represent your book. So I'm very excited because I have an agent, although she's in the second tier. Um, I'm excited, so I contact the other agents that still have my manuscript, and I say, I've been offered representation. Um, I want to know if you're still interested. Um, so Stacy immediately replies back, and she says, how much time do I have? And this was, I think, a Wednesday. I said, I've told the agent that I will call her and speak to her on Monday. Not that I'm going to make a decision, but we're going to have a conversation just for me to see if I like this agent as a person. So she says, I'm on it. Um, I'll, I'll let you know by the end of the weekend. OK, great. So as the good stalker that I am, um, I was watching her Twitter feed. Um, and it was somewhere around 9 o'clock my time, which was basically midnight. She sends me an email saying, I'm halfway through. I'm loving it. OK, thank god. So now again, I'm watching Twitter. And at about 2 AM my time, which is 5 AM her time, she writes, the moment when you, when you understand you have a star in your hands. And I thought, I hope she's talking about my manuscript. <laughs> um, and so she, within five minutes of that tweet, she emails me. And she says, I love it. I, I want to represent it. When can you talk? I was going to say, how about now? You know, it's only 3 AM. You know, I'm good. You know? But in any event, so I spoke to her. Um, and you know, I knew right away that energy was right. We, were, uh, we, start, we started talking for almost two hours 
just about, not about you know um, what she wanted me to change, but about what I wanted out of my career as a writer. And I understood that I would found a partner, not, not someone who just wanted to do this one sale because she thought she'd make a whole bunch of money. In fact, the story got interesting after that. So um, Thanksgiving Day, I told her I'm in. We, we, um, on the Saturday, I sent her the signed contract. Sunday, she sends me a message and she says, Okay, so you know how I told you I'll take about 30 days until I create a submission list for all the publishers? I said, yeah. She says, well, I was talking to, my, uh, to the acquisition editor at Simon Schuster Atria, and she loved the concept. She wants to read your manuscript. So we're starting now. So at this point, I'm, I'm almost throwing up all over the house. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I started getting nervous. Then she sent me a spreadsheet of all the people that she was going to uh, send it to, um, and it started. Um, the no's, and then we got the yes. I want more man, more. I want the rest of the manuscript because for them it's just the same process as querying you, uh, you querying them. They send in uh, a sample with a with a pitch, and if they want the rest of the manuscript, they they start requesting them. So of the, I think there was forty. Um, different imprints and publishers that were on that list, we, re we, were re uh, we got 28 requests for, uh, for the full. There were no's, obviously. There was a bunch of no's. We did get, in the end, we had six uh, offers. Um, but two of them I really, really wanted. Um, one, the acquisition editor loved it. Um, she, wanted, uh, she wanted to know what the next two books would be. She took it to the editorial board, and the editorial board said, we're worried about his uh, debut status. Will he be able to generate enough marketing buzz? Um, so because of that, they decided it was too, I was too much of a risk. Um, another one, that one, felt that there wasn't enough sex in my book. Um, at the, at, this was at the editorial board meeting again. So in effect, basically, they were saying, it's close, but not close enough. Um, and then the imprints of the big boys the offers they were giving, they were just, it was almost insulting. I felt like, God, you know, I'm, I'm going to be lost in the shuffle. I'm, I'm not getting any of the subsidiary rights. They're going to own my manuscript for forever. Um, so we took a different strategic tact, and, uh, and we started thinking about the smaller presses that have been able to do well. Um, and the concept for me, I wasn't desperate to get published. I was, I was desperate for people to read my book. Um, in other words, I didn't care about the money. That wasn't, I wasn't trying to replace my job. I was very happy with what I was doing. But what, what happened at that point is we started thinking about the big fish in the small pond. That if you could actually stand out in the smaller press, you will get more attention and, and, and be able to do more that way. So what ended up happening was we looked at some of the smaller presses who really wanted it, um, and we picked one that we thought was good, and primarily for one reason. Um, this author named Rachel Van Dyken. She was probably the number three most popular new adult writer, and she had two New York Times bestsellers with that small publisher. And I was a new adult, and I thought, you know, she's a, she, she, my agent knew her, so we were going to be able to write her coattails to a certain extent. We signed the contract, we get in bed, um, and we're doing all this, and within two months, Rachel leaves the publi that, that publisher. <laughs> like, holy crap. So, um, so I called Stacy, I said, did you realize that she left? She goes, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what happened. Okay. At this point, we're starting to get a little nervous because we're not getting any edits back. I haven't yet seen cover concepts. And with smaller presses, the timeline isn't two years, it's six months. Um, so I'm, I'm really getting nervous, and I'm talking to publicists, and we're trying to get things ready. I want the cover reveal. I want to organize all these things. But we have nothing to even start um, a, a marketing campaign. So my, my agent, God bless her, um, at around 11 o'clock my time, 2 a.m. her time, she calls me, and we talk for two hours. And basically what we're saying is, should I pull it back? Um, and at one point she said, all, right, she says, all my instincts tell me, that we should walk away from this deal. We have enough reasons to be able to pull the contract back. She said, I would prefer if you were self-published and I just sold your subsidiary rights than to put you in a house that's not gonna support you. And I said, you know what, let's do it. Let's pull it back. So I was ready for my launch. I was, it was literally a month and a half before book launch. Um, I was scheduled to be a speaker at the Santa Barbara Writers Conference and that was it, it was finished, right? And all the publishers that she had already gone to, we couldn't go back to them because we had that either said no or we had said no to them. So we started all over again, um, and now it was a smaller pool. But there was this one publisher, Small Press, that we really liked, but they weren't willing to part ways with the subsidiary rights. So I changed my status on Facebook, on Twitter, because I had written that it was gonna be published, blah, 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 with blah, blah, blah. And the owner of the, of the press 
noticed the change in my status. And she contacted Stacy, my agent, and she said, if Ara's available again, we want to talk. He's the one that got away. But I've got to tell you, the small press path um, was the answer for me. Because I became that the bigger fish. They really, there were a lot of authors, don't get me wrong. But what the difference was that I knew I had to work hard for publicity and promotion and so on. And because they knew I knew I had to work hard, they put even more effort behind my work. I got to tell you, I mean, the journey itself has been phenomenal. It's been heartbreaking. It's been awesome. Um, and, then, and then when the book was published last May, um, all the relationships that I had built through social media, through the conferences, through everything else, it just paid back. Um, my, local, uh, my local chapter of the Romance Writers of America, they, they started tweeting about everything that was going on. I had a street team of friends who were also debut novelists, and we were helping each other, put, uh, spreading the word. It was really, um, a, a, really a great effort from people who really wanted to support me because over the years we had been supporting each other. When you build those relationships and the community that you get from conferences and other, uh, other forms of media, these people become your biggest advocate, they become your biggest fan. Um, very quickly we started getting the reviews from the book bloggers and I gotta tell you the thing that kept me awake was the the harassment I would get of why does this guy think he can write romance or what kind of a love scene was that or, or you name it right oh, of course a guy would write that you know, I was thinking that's what's gonna happen instead the feedback has been phenomenal um, things like a breath of fresh air in romance if this is new adult I'm finally ready to read it again things of that sort and it really made me feel good about what, what I was doing um, at the end of the day, as I mentioned, you know, you go through this journey, it's going to repeat itself. My second manuscript is with my agent now, I just sent it to her this past Tuesday, but it was four months after she gave me a brow beating over the things that I needed to fix. So just because, you know, you're a success, you have an agent, doesn't mean, you know, you're, you're scot-free. The hard work never ends. Um, and I'm hopeful. I think, I think I, I really love what I've done with the second manuscript, and I'm really excited about it. So I'm hopeful, but the journey starts all over again. If you guys have watched or read anything about Mount Everest, you know, all the, all the challenges and all the possibility of death going there, publication cycle feels just like that. You know, just because you got an agent, you have not climbed Everest. Um, what you have is you have a Sherpa um, <laughs> who, who may make it up there with you, or who may abandon you at one time too. Anything can happen. 